You see the cross right here behind me. We're going to do something different today. In your bulletin, there is a piece of paper there where you can write any concerns that you may have. It may be a personal concern. It may be a concern for someone. It may be a name of someone uh, who probably is not saved and that you have been praying for. Uh, you don't have to write the name exactly. You could probably just use the initials of that person. But uh, later on, uh, towards the end of the message, uh, we would ask you to, to come and just <coughs> nail that paper to the cross. Nail that paper to the cross. You see, in, in, in our Christian walk, we, we, we use symbolisms. It does not mean that that, that, that that symbol is what does it, okay? Because the blood of Jesus Christ has done it. We, we partake of the Lord's Supper. Uh, the, the Lord's Supper, when we partake of it, it does not forgive us of our sins, but it reminds us of the forgiveness of our sins, right? That's what Jesus wanted us to do. In the Old Testament, they had festivals, to, to remind them of the things that God has done for the nation of Israel. So today, we're going to do some, some kind of a symbolism. Uh, this is not the real cross of Jesus Christ, but it's just a symbol. Uh, just for us to be reminded that uh, anything that we bring to the cross, it will not be forgotten. So we'll do that later on. With, of course, with the assurance that the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us more than 2,000 years ago, has already done the job. So this is just, like I said, a symbolism. So you can fill out that, that paper, uh, just write anything. You don't have to put your name on it. And then later on, like I said, towards the end, especially because as we celebrate this Holy Week, you know, the passion and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we just want to do this something that is different. So our message for today, as I promised you, will be from John chapter 12. Remember, we, we talked about uh, uh, the scripture from John chapter 13, 14, and last week, I believe, Vic uh, preached from John chapter 15. Is that right? I hope he did. I told him to. <laughs> anyway, so, and I promise you that we will go back to John chapter 12. For John chapter 12 is where we will find the record of Jesus entering Jerusalem, the day that is called the Triumphal Entry Day or the Palm Sunday Day. And that is what we are celebrating today. And just to remind you also, this week we will have uh, Holy Week services in different churches. And we will host the first one tonight at 7 p.m., not at 6 p.m., at 7 p.m. tonight, and 7 p.m. every night throughout the week, except on Friday, which will be held at 12 noon, okay? If you don't have the schedule for the services for this week, we still have copies out there in the foyer, just pick up one so you will know what <coughs> church to go to on what night of the week, okay? So John chapter 12. If you have your Bibles with you, open your Bibles to John chapter 12. Before we go to John chapter 12, ask the person sitting next to you, what kind of a worshiper are you? Come on, go ahead. Uh, did you get an answer? No, no answer? Huh? He gave you an answer? Okay, remember that answer. <laughs> anyway, when, when my son was working at a, uh, a manufacturing plant in Kentucky, uh, he said this one guy that he was working with said to him, uh, did you say that you, you, are, uh, uh, you are a mixture of uh, uh, white and, and, and Asian or Chinese? And my son uh, said, uh, yeah, yeah. And then the guy said, so uh, what kind of Chinese are you? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, he just had to laugh. <laughs> I said, no, 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 no. There are no different kinds of Chinese. He had to explain that to him. I said, I said oh, OK. I said, I guess what I meant is, what kind of Asian 
you know, what, what, what do you have a part of? So anyway, well, I'm half Filipino. He had to explain. There's a half Filipino right here. <laughs> anyway, so the question for us today is not what kind of Chinese are you, okay? But the question is what kind of worshiper are you? Because, you know, in John chapter 12, we will read different types of people who claim to be worshipers of God. Who claim to be worshipers of God. But there's one who showed us exactly what a worshiper is like in John chapter 12. If you read chapter 12, like I said, there are different types of worshipers that were, uh, that were given to us here as an example of. One of them is uh, the group of people, the crowd, who welcomed Jesus as he entered Jerusalem. You see, these, this, this crowd, according to the, the record that John gave us, is that this is the crowd who saw the miracles that Jesus performed. Many of them, even Greeks, who were not Jews, okay, came because they've heard of what happened a few weeks prior to this, and that was when Jesus, okay, when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Because of this event, many people became interested in finding out who this Jesus was. And if he was the one who raised someone from the dead, then he must be someone who is worthy of their worship. And so they came because they wanted to see Jesus and also because they wanted to see Lazarus. Why? Because Lazarus basically represented the very power of Jesus because Jesus raised him from the dead. The Bible also tells us that because of the raising of Lazarus, many people believed in Jesus Christ. And many of those people were at the triumphal entry. They worshiped Jesus Christ. They put their cloaks on the road or on the path where Jesus was going to walk. They, they got palm branches and laid them before Jesus so that as Jesus comes into Jerusalem, Jesus would walk on their robes, would walk on those palm branches, and they were all shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna to the King of Kings, Hosanna to the Son of David, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They were worshiping. They were worshiping. As a matter of fact, as they were worshiping, the Pharisees said to Jesus, look at what's happening. They're worshiping you. And so Jesus answered them, you know what? Don't stop them. Because if you stop them, Jesus said, the stones will cry out. The stones will cry out. Why? Because that day, basically Jesus is telling them, that day was set aside by Jesus so that he will, be, he will be worshipped on that day. And so people worshipped him. And Jesus said, if you stop these people from worshipping me today, the stones will cry out. Why? Because he's saying, I have set this day for me to be worshipped in Jerusalem. That's the first type of worshipper. They came and worshipped because of the miracles of Jesus Christ. They worship Jesus because of what he has done, raising Lazarus from the dead. Now, the sad thing is this. <clears throat> These same people who worshiped him on Sunday is the same group of people later on who shouted, crucify him. <clears throat> That's the first type of worshiper. When Jesus was not going to show a miracle anymore, they shouted, Crucify him. Tell the person sitting next to you, I hope you're not that type of worshiper. No. 
We don't want to be that type. Now, there's another type of worshiper here. His name was Judas. He was with Jesus Christ, remember? For three years. As a matter of fact, if you will hear the very words of Judas in this chapter, the first part of chapter 12, it's like you will say, wow, what a noble statement. You know what his statement was? Well, Mary came in and anointed the feet of Jesus with a very expensive perfume. Judas said, why waste such an, uh, an expensive perfume? That perfume should have been just sold and then the money be given to the poor. And then John said, well, you think Judas was sincere about those words? No, he wanted the money to be put in the coffer because he dips his hand into the coffer and get the money in there because he was the one handling their money. He was a thief. He was pretending to be a worshiper of God and of Jesus Christ, but actually just using Jesus for himself. That is why when an opportunity came for him to be offered 30 pieces of silver, what did Jesus, Judas do? He betrayed the, the Jesus that he was supposed to be a worshiper of. <coughs> Judas was a taker, not a giver. If you worship Jesus be, simply because of what you get, you can complete the sentence. <laughs> you know, our problem sometimes is we are actually sometimes in that situation. We come to worship expecting to get more than thinking of what we will get. Well, we're Americans, that's why. We're consumers. I'm supposed to get. I'm supposed to always ask, what's in it for me? If there's nothing there for me, don't expect me to be there. That's the consumer worshiper. Now the person sitting next to you. I hope you're not that kind of worshiper. <laughs> and then there was the Pharisees. The Pharisees supposedly are worshipers of God. They were supposed to be worshipers of God. They were spiritual leaders of the Jews. But then when Jesus came, they cannot stand the fact that Jesus was smarter than them. And that Jesus would was teaching people about how it is to be a true worshiper of God. And so what did they do? They plotted to kill Jesus. Not only did they plot to kill Jesus, and actually they were successful at killing Jesus later on, but they also plotted to kill Lazarus. Why? Because on account of Lazarus, according to John chapter 12, on account of Lazarus, many believed in Jesus. So the Pharisees who were pretending to be worshipers will kill not only Jesus, but those who testify to the power of Jesus. Wow! And they claim 
to be doing that on account of their faith in God. Not only did they want to kill Jesus, but they wanted to kill those who testify to the power of Jesus Christ. And there are people who do that. If you are uh, such a person who is so bold about your faith, there are people who will not like you at all because you testify to the power of Jesus Christ. But then at the same time, those people will claim to be worshipers of God. Those are the Pharisees. They are the ones who told Jesus to stop the people from worshiping him. And they're the ones to whom Jesus said, if you stop the people, the stones will cry out. So again, that's another type of worshiper. And again, turn to your neighbor and say, I hope you're not that kind of worshiper. You know what? There is one worshiper in this passage in John chapter 12. <clears throat> Who would be a very good example of who, what kind of a worshiper God would want us to be? His name is Mary. <clears throat> Chapter 12, verses 1 to the following. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. That was Mary. Mary anointed Jesus with a very costly perfume. He did not worry about the cost. She did not worry about the price of the perfume. She only cared about what she wanted to offer to Jesus. She was a giver, not a taker. You see, if you want to be a a true worshiper of God, you have to understand that to worship God is to give to God what He is worth. That's what worship is. Worthship. The worth of the one that we worship. And when you think of the worth of Jesus, the worth of the God that we worship, His worth could not be compared to anything in the world. He's worth more than the world itself. Anything that we can give to him in worship is nothing compared to his worth. He is the God of the universe. He created you and I. He gives life to you and me. He gave his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. He's worth more than anything we could give. And yet a lot of times, he gets the least of us. We sometimes feel if we have given him an hour in a week that we've done a lot. We sometimes think that if we have given him $20 a week that we have done everything. No. He's worth more than that. 
To worship God is to give to Him. It's not to take from Him. That's what Mary was. And you know what? Not only did he pour that expensive perfume on Jesus' feet. You know what? He, he, she could have poured that on his head. But no, he chose the feet. I guess Mary was thinking, this is not even worth anything about Jesus. So, so the, the least part of Jesus might be his feet. Because no matter how expensive the perfume was, it only fits the feet of Jesus. My wife gave me a, an expensive perfume many years ago, actually three or four or five years ago. It was my favorite one, but I only get it when someone gives it to me. And my wife said, he looked in my drawer and said, you still have this? I said, yeah, I only use that, that on special occasions, like when we go on dates. I said, what? I bought you that so you can smell like that all the time. <laughs> I said, I know, but it's like, I know it's so expensive. I only use it on special occasions. And I just put a little and dab it behind my ear, <laughs> you know. And, but I have a cheap perfume from Walmart, and I tell you, I, I go to town with that. I'm worth that. <laughs> but it, it, it has to be on special occasion. No, no, no. Imagine Mary, an expensive perfume. And she thinks, I can only put this expensive perfume on the feet of Jesus. I believe because she realizes the worth of Jesus. And not only that, after she anointed the feet of Jesus with an expensive perfume, she knelt down and wiped the feet of Jesus with her hands. There is a worshiper. When Jesus was arrested and was nailed to the cross, guess who was the only few people who were right there at the foot of the cross? It was me. On the first day of the week, guess who was one of the first people who went to the tomb to anoint. It was Mary. In glory and in death, Mary was a worshiper. Tell the person sitting next to you, I hope you're that kind of worshiper. Come on. <laughs> in glory and in death, Mary was there. Do not allow anything to stop you from worshiping God. I mean anything. Because when we worship, we give. We don't take. Even if we go home and say, I did not get anything from that worship, you're not supposed to. <laughs> you were supposed to give, remember? But how many times have we gone and said, you know what? That was a waste of time. I went to church, didn't get anything. I said, well, good. <laughs> because that means when you came to worship, you came just to take. 
don't be a taker. <laughs> be a giver. Say that to the person sitting next to you. Yeah. Don't be a taker. <laughs> be a giver. Be a worshiper. That's what God wants from us. A worshiper who comes to give to God. Jesus invites us and says, come unto me. And Jesus said, give to me whatever concerns you may have. You see, the beautiful thing about Jesus is that he's not only telling us to give to him our money and our strength and our abilities. He also says, give to me your concerns, your burdens. So if that is what you can give to Jesus today, your burdens, he says, bring it on. Have you written your concerns? Come on, bring it on. Nail it to the cross. As Janet is playing this song, come on, nail to the cross your concerns because Jesus wants not only your abilities and your talents, He wants your burdens and your concerns. That's how good our God is. There are nails here, there are hammers here. Just make sure you're hammering the nail and not your hammer nail. <laughs> Remember, we did this as a, as a symbol. We know that the cross of Jesus Christ, where he suffered and died more than 2,000 years ago, took care of everything for us. Our problem sometimes is uh, it's easy for us to forget. That's why we have the Lord's Supper, to be reminded all the time. That's why we celebrate the Holy Week, to be reminded year after year that there is a cross on Calvary where Jesus was nailed to. And in that one act of obedience, Paul says, the many have become righteous before him. So always remember the cross of Christ. If not for that, we have nothing. And because of that, just like Mary, we must be willing to give everything to the Lord. Because a true worshiper is not just one who worships because he's afraid. A true worshiper is not one who worships because he's strong. A true worshiper is a worshiper who worships because he loves the God who saved him from his sin. Mm -hmm.